morning, church. We just want to greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus this morning. We're sending His love and His glory and to all of you. Amen. Shine in the shadows, you in every bed. 
greet you all, everybody at home with the wonderful name of Jesus. We're saying the Lord has the battle won. Amen. So don't you be weary. Don't be tired. Or don't be anxious. Just give it all to Jesus because he's already won the battle. Hallelujah.
Mount family, just worship at home. Release the sound of worship unto the God of heavens. The God of the earth, the God of universes. He's the King of kings. And He'll always be seated on high. Come on, let's just lift His name on high now. As we pray for our country and what we're going through right now. Come on, somebody just pray to the Lord and thank Him for life. Father, we give you praise this morning. We worship you this morning. We give you glory and honor. You are worth of all the praise, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. We lift up your name because there is no one like you, our great God. We give you praise and we shout your name. And we say hallelujah to your name. We give you glory and honor. We lift up your name, Jesus. Because you are worth of all the praise. Thank you for the gift of salvation yes, Lord. that you have given us. Thank you for translating us from the kingdom of darkness yes. into the kingdom of your marvelous light. We worship you, Lord. We give you glory. We lift up your name. There is no one like you, our great Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you for all the blessings. Thank you for provision. Thank you for this assembly. Thank you for our brethren. Thank you for everything that you have done for us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We dedicate this service, Lord, into your hands. We want to start with you. We want to be led by your spirit in the name of Jesus. We don't want to do things according to our minds, according to our thinking, according to what we feel, but we want to be led by your spirit. We submit this morning, Lord, to the leadership of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit of God. Take over this morning, Lord. Take over this service, Holy Spirit. Transform our lives this morning. We yield to your leadership this morning in the name of Jesus. Touch everyone who is participating from home. Everyone who is in this auditorium. May your spirit touch him. Touch everyone, Lord. Lead us in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We glorify you. We thank you for your presence. We know that you are here with us. Even your word says, where there are two or three of you gathered in my name, there I am in your midst. And we can feel your presence this morning, Lord. Let your word that is going to be preached this morning change lives, bring healing to the sick, bring salvation to the unsaved, bring deliverance to those that need it, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. May it restore broken families. May it restore broken relationships. May it bring salvation to your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. For nothing can happen in this world until you, God, declare it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We know that no door can open if you have shut it. No door can close if you have opened it, Lord. Everything in this universe moves according to your word moves according to your decrees, moves according to your laws in the name of Jesus. We know that the universe exists in you. You exist outside it. You created everything, Lord. Creator of the universe. Savior of mankind. We glorify you. There is nothing like you. There is no one like you. Holy, holy is the Lamb of God that was slain for our salvation. 
For all the angels in heaven, they sing, Holy, holy are you, Lord. Glory be to the Lamb of God that was slain for our salvation. And in the same mindset this morning, Lord, we declare also glory and honor be to the Lamb of the living God. The Lamb that was slain for our justification. The Lamb that was slain that our sins may be forgiven. Thank you, Lord, for this meeting. Thank you for a new thing that you are doing in South Africa. Thank you, Father, for the revival that is coming in South Africa and in the world today in Jesus' name. Father, start with us this service and let, us, let it end with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Family, welcome to this service. I welcome you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Brother Martin and I'm going to be your MC this morning. Um, I want to welcome all our first-time visitors that are joining us for the first time. Uh, if this is uh, your first time, please uh, don't let it be your last. Please keep coming. We want to see you again next week. Another thing, family, please share this broadcast on your Facebook or whatever platform that you are watching from. Share it, spread it, so that others also can join in the name of Jesus Christ. At this point, I want to go to announcements very quickly. We don't have many announcements, but uh, I will share the one that I have. Um, fasting and prayer for our country continues from the 13th to the 25th of July. So we are continuing with the program. We have an online prayer meeting that, we, oh, that is happening every day. Uh, at 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock on MS Teams. The meeting link will be posted on the what, uh, WhatsApp broadcast. So please also participate in that. Do not be left behind. Hallelujah. We know the trouble that is occurring right now in our country. We need to pray for our country. So please join us as we go into this prayer meeting. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to get to a time of uh, giving and offering. Time of giving and offering. There is a common saying that uh, giving time is blessing time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want us to read very quickly the scripture. And um, let me give it to you now. This is... Uh, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7, on giving. And I will read maybe two more, but the first one says, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. The second one, it's again 2 Corinthians 8, verse 12, for if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Then the last one, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 11, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through your genero generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. You know, I was thinking about giving the other day that uh, in the Old Testament, there were all sorts of givings all sorts of gifts that the people of God were commanded to bring to the temple of God. And the reasons for this giving, most of which were, had something to do with the maintenance of the house of God, to do the work of God. And also um, to give to the poor, the orphans, and so on. Now, in the New Testament, giving takes rather a different perspective because it's not under compulsion like what we read in the scripture. You are not compelled to give. You are not forced to give. You give free offerings according to your heart, what your heart purports you to do. And therefore, however, the reasons that existed in the Old Testament for giving, we still have them today. Therefore, giving is a very special thing. It's a very important thing to do in the house of God. And at this point, I want to compel all of you, or rather to uh, ask all of you to really be faithful to the Lord with your giving, Amen. with your tithes, and with your offering.
give your very best. And on the other Sunday, we're talking about why do we give to God? It's because he has already given us his best. So I believe it's actually an insult to God if we give something that is not our best. Because he gave us his best. That was his son. His only son, Jesus Christ. So how then can we respond to that love? We respond to that by giving our best. Whether in tithes and offering, in praise and in worship, and in our dedication to the things of God. We have to give our very best. We are responding to his love. We are not giving because we have. We are giving because it's a response to say, Lord, thank you for your son that you gave us. For your son that brought me salvation. How much can you buy salvation? You can never buy it with money. But you see, you respond with how you can. With your praise, with your offering, with the works of your hands, the fruits of your hands, which is the income that you get, and then you give it back to the Lord. In actual fact, when we give, we are not giving something that belongs to us. The moment that we understand that everything that we have belongs to God, giving will become easy. Which means my house is not mine, it's the Lord's. My children are not mine, they belong to the Lord. My money is not mine, it belongs to the Lord. The moment we have that mentality, giving becomes easy because God made me a custodian of all these things. I am just a channel to bless the world, in other words. So I respond to his love with my giving. And at this point, the church really requires you to be faithful with your giving. We know we are in the middle of a pandemic, but the, the, the door to your blessing comes with your giving. Have you ever noticed that people that don't give don't have much? So when we respond, there is a biblical principle of receiving when we give. If you keep holding it, you can't receive more. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm going to, call, to, to challenge all of you this morning to be faithful to the word of God. Take out your phones, use your zipper app, make a transfer into the bank account of the church. And um, then the church can also be able to function, can also be able to pay its bills and other things that are needed here in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, I won't take too much time. And at this point, I'm going to ask Jamela to lead us into a time of... Um, Worship, but as I've said, if you haven't shared this broadcast, please take your cell phone. Just share the broadcast. Last week, we had 16 shares. We want to have more and more shares. Everyone who is watching must share this broadcast so that it can reach all the other parts of the world. And just before I leave, I want to, I know Pastor Owen is going to come and share the word. Brothers and sisters, when the word is shared, Remember, the Bible says that the word of God is quick and sharp and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword to the piercing asunder of soul and spirit, dividing the bones and the marrow. And as it's being preached, put your faith in it, which means as the word of God is being preached, it is the ability to bring you healing in your body, to make a difference in your life. For as long as you receive it by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't just watch. Participate. Join in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jamela, can you lead us into worship? If you can, please stand up from where you are. Lift up your hands in the, I mean, towards heaven. And participate in worship. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We honor you this morning, Jesus. We give you all the praise. with us now.
atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here the evidence is all around for the spirit Can we all 
just praising the Lord for my hope. He is healing our land. He is healing every heart right now. Because He is omnipresent. He is with you right now. Vamos! place in our hearts, in our spirits, and we know that it will be done because you've promised us in your word that you, O oh Father God, will send your power and you send your Holy Spirit to be our helper, our redeemer, our savior. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Father God, we know that through your love, you are healing this place. You are healing South Africa, Lord. You are purifying the gates of this land, every border and every gate, Lord, and every door, Lord, that was shut by the enemy. You will open it this morning. Through your blood, oh Jesus, we know we have won this victory. Jesus we thank you Lord we lift your name on high because we know Lord that with your love and your blood and your power with us nothing can be against us a miracle
for the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the bright and morning star, the lily of the valley, our healer, our deliverer, our fortress, our shield, our strength, the lifter of our heads. Lord, thank you that you are our portion. You are our bread of life. You are our sustenance of life. You are our defender. You are our advocate. Lord, thank you that we can count on you. Thank you that your word says that he that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you, Jesus, that your arm is never too short to help and your ear is never too deaf to hear. Thank you, Lord, that we can count on your word and your promises, which is yes and amen. Thank you, Lord, that you have a proven track record throughout our lives and through the history of the earth that you hold the universe in the palm of your hand. Thank you, Lord, that you hold your people in the palm of your hand. Lord, amidst of a pandemic, in the midst of riots and a storm brewing around us, Lord, when we call upon the name of the Lord, anyone who calls upon your name shall be saved. Thank you, Lord, that amidst of all these things, these circumstances that we go through, we can still stand upon your word. We can still stand upon your promises. We can still stand upon our faith in you. We can still rely on you, for you are not a man that you shall lie. But every word that goes out from your mouth comes back in fulfillment to what you have sent it out for. And I thank you this morning with the church online that we can praise you and worship you. And and lift your name on high, for you are the, 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 the true maker of your word. For you are uh, someone we can depend upon. For you are our fighter, our warrior, our champion through it all. We've learned to trust in Jesus, as that song says. We've learned to trust in God. Through it all, we've trust in you, Lord. We bless your name, Father. We pray for those this morning that is struggling with their faith in you. That's going through a challenging time. If that's you uh, who I'm speaking about, just raise your hands to the screen or to whatever device and receive what the Lord is going to do to you this morning. Father, I pray for those who are struggling to have faith in you. Father, we bring those that's going through a challenging time before your throne this morning, whatever the circumstances may be. And Father, we pray that you give them boldness pray that you'd give them strength at this moment. We pray, Lord, that you'd give them the peace that surpasses all understanding which we can only find in the presence of God. For your word says that where the presence of God is, there is peace. We come against every spirit of fear that is holding you captive right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke it and cast it out. And we pray that God's spirit of boldness would rest upon you right now in the name of Jesus. That you will fear nothing because your faith is in the person of Jesus Christ. We bless your name, Lord. We pray for this preached word. We pray that it would challenge us. We pray that it would edify us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
type amen if you agree. Type amen if you receive. Give this service a share. Uh, as I said last week, we have seen so many bad news being shared on, um, on social media. Church, it's time to share good news. It's time to share hope in Jesus Christ. So do yourself a favor. Do your neighbor a favor. Do your contacts on your timelines a favor. And share the service so that the hope of Christ can fill this world. Not the bad news that's currently going on. Not the circumstances. But that people may have hope in Christ. That our lights may shine during this difficult time. I want to talk to you this morning about hiding in God's name. Now, when I was working on this and uh, preparing this message, I, I, I thought of uh, a person I've never met in my life before, but, but um, know a lot about, because I've heard a lot of stories about this person, which is my, my grandfather. Uh, he went on to be with the Lord before I was born, but he was around when I was, when I, uh, before I was born, but by the time I came out, he wasn't around anymore. And um, he was a European guy, a guy from European descent, and um, married my grandma. They lived here in Johannesburg, and then they moved down to Cape Town, where my dad and his siblings grew up. Now, apparently, from what I hear, he was a very protective person. In other words, when someone, when someone would, would, would bully or gangsters would try to rob his uh, or bully his children, he would, he had a very short temper and he would go and go and find those people and deal with them. And he had a reputation in the community, especially amongst the gangsters, that you can mess with anyone's family, but you don't mess with, uh, they called him Mr. Smith, with Mr. Smith's family. Because then Mr. Smith will come out and he will be in trouble and your family will be in trouble and your friends will be in trouble because you've messed with the wrong family. And I was, and, and I was thinking about it, it's like, isn't it? really nice wouldn't it be nice for when trouble comes when the enemy comes that you have a place to go and hide yourself in a place where you go to go and feel safe wouldn't it be nice that 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 when riots come and all these things happening we have a place to run to to be safe to feel safe to feel protected. Wouldn't it be nice to have that? And I think in the same way, we do as born again believers have that. That ability to run to a place. To run to a person to be safe when times of trouble comes. To go to a secret place. To go and hide in the shadow of the Almighty. When times of trouble comes, what do you do when the devil tries to bully you or is bullying you? Where do you turn to? Who do you run to when times of trouble comes your way? When your shop is being robbed, when, your, when a riot is going and it's causing your business havoc and you cannot make a sustainable business anymore because of the riots and all these things. Who do you turn to? What do you do in a time like this? Where do you find safety in a time of trouble? You find it in the name of the Lord. You find it. You run to the name of the Lord. You find safety. You find comfort. You find you find sustenance, strength, boldness in the name of the Lord. That's where you find it. If you have your Bibles, it will be on the back as well. Please open with me to Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10. Only going to do that one verse. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10. It's a very famous passage. It says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. I'm going to say the first part again. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. 
Now looking at the original language of this, which in this case is Hebrew, we find that the word defend in Psalms 20 verse 1 means to be set safely and securely on a high place. In other words, to be set in a place where you are out of reach of danger. Right? To be too high to be captured. And, and, and by implication means to be strong, so strong as to be inaccessible. So this tower, which, which is so strong, it is inaccessible to the enemy. Now, when we compare this to Solomon's phrase, Psalms 20 verse 1, to Solomon's phrase, which says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, we see that it's exactly the same. Solomon meant exactly the same, that it's a strong tower, it's too high to be accessed, and it's so strong that you cannot break through it, so whoever is inside it is safe. <coughs> One of the uses for towers in the Old Testament is that they were used as fortresses in times of war. We read in Judges chapter 9 verse 51 where they say, But there was a strong tower in the city, and all the men and women and all the people of the city fled there and shut themselves in. Then, they, then they went up to the top of the tower, and they were safe, and they would wait at, out until the siege is passed, and then they would come out of the tower again. A strong tower like this in biblical times was practically impenetrable. And that's why when the, when the enemy would attack, the whole city or the whole village would run to this designated tower which they have built, trying to avoid being avoid being killed or anything, and they would be safe in there. In the ancient times, a person's name was much more than a random title or something to identify themselves with. A name expressed uh, usually, and I think it's a lot like that in the, in, an, in the African culture as well, is that a name expressed the person's nature and individual attributes in this case. Thus, God's name represents his essential character, but it doesn't only stop with his character, but it also represents his authority as God. The person of God and the name of God then cannot be separated from one another. And so here Solomon comes, one of the wisest kings that could all that would have lived on the time of the earth. And he said that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are saved. Now. Why would Solomon make a statement like this? And I can give you many reasons, but I'm only going to give you a few reasons. The first reason is because his father, King David's life, was evident of someone who knew the name of the Lord and who knew the nature of God as a strong tower. His life was evident of someone hiding constantly in the Lord. We see this in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 45 when David stood in front of Goliath and he said to Goliath, you come to me with, with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. The biggest opponent David would have, would have fought against in his entire life at that point in time. He stood there with only uh, rocks and a, and, a, and, a, and a slingshot and he said, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord because David at that time had experienced the strong tower who is God and so he had nothing to fear and obviously David became king and now and and, and so so these stories would have been told right across the, the 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 nation David's nation because of him being brave but what they didn't know is he hid he hid in the strong tower which was his lord he came to you with that. David possessed a firm hold and belief in the power of God's name. And that would not only impact himself, but also his whole nation, which he would end up ruling. 
when we see David hiding uh, his life away from, uh, hiding himself away from Saul because Saul was, look, was, was looking to kill him, he hid in God's name. Yes, he was in a cave at some stage in time. Yes, he was in a wilderness at some stage in time. But you constantly see David never losing his connection with God as he goes through these things. So even though he went through a difficult time, he still status remained unchanged which is in the strong tower in the name of my lord jesus christ that's where david was we see this throughout his life secondly god's name is a strong tower because of the infinite heights and depths of his person presence and power are in that name there's so much depth in there the righteous, those who are made right with God through a relationship with Jesus Christ, can run into Him, can run to Him in all His revealed perfection, can run into Him in His faithfulness, can run into Him in His power, can run into Him in His authority, can run into Him in His mercy, His love, and be set on high. Do you see, do you get the sense that it's a, it's a, it's a status? Remember when a king is anointed as a king by the priest or whoever anoints them, it is a status that is bestowed on this king. And no one could ever remove that because he's now anointed as king. And so when I am stepping into the name of the Lord or when I'm running into the name of the Lord, which is a strong tower and me who is righteous in it, it is a status that I have. And that means that, that I cannot be touched now because I'm under the protection of the Almighty. I'm in the protection of the Almighty. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 says, She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from all sins. According to Philippians chapter 2 verse 9, Jesus is the name above every other name. And he continues, and at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is king. And I'm telling you today, even if you don't have knees, knees will be given to you, but bow, you will bow at this name. The Greek word for salvation used in this verse is, is, is funny enough, is zozo, S-O-Z-O, which denotes or pro a process of being saved, being healed, delivered, rescued, set free, protected, and becoming completely whole and preserved. And that's what we find when we hide in the name of the Lord. We are preserved. We are made whole. We are protected. We are set free. We are rescued. We are delivered. We are healed. We are saved in the name of the Lord. John 14, 12 to 14 says, Verily, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Because your status has changed. You are set in high places in Christ. In the tower, in his name, which is a strong tower, which you've ran into. Thirdly, the name of the Lord is equivalent to the Lord himself. It speaks of a revealed essence of, of God or the revelation of himself in the history of salvation. The Lord shows himself faithful and trustworthy to all who confide in Him. I dare you this morning that whatever you are going through in your life today, whatever circumstances you are facing, whatever circumstances you are surrounding, 
Go and hide yourself in the strong tower. Go and run and spend time in the strong tower. You will see the strong tower, which is Jesus Christ. Reveal himself um, uh, as your salvation. Reveals himself as faithful. Reveals himself as trustworthy. Reveals himself as someone in whom you can confide in and be safe and be sustained. From the ends of the earth, I cry to you for help when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the towering rock of safety, for you are my refuge, a fortress my enemies cannot reach. It. Some translation says, a fortress in a time of trouble. Psalms 6 verses, uh, 61 verses, one, verses 2 to 3. The ESV says of this phrase, For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Verse 3. The name of the Lord is a strong tower because He is our defense. Get to a place, get to a point in your life where the Lord becomes your defense. You know it takes a discipline to leave something in the hands of the Lord. And keep it in the hands of the Lord. But get to a place where the Lord is your defense. As we discover what God has revealed about His character, we can trust in Him. Because our God has a proven track record that He never fails. That He's a deliverer. That He never leaves us. That He always comes through at His time. Some people say God is mighty slow, but He's always on time. I want to say God is never slow, but He's always Always on time because he is out of time and he doesn't adhere to our time. Fourth point, the name of the Lord and his character are the same. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Psalms 9 verse 10. As Elohim, he is our creator. As Yahweh. He is the covenant-keeping eternal I am. As El Shaddai, He is the all-sufficient, all-powerful God Almighty. As Jehovah Jireh, He is our provider. As Yeshua, He is a savior. He is the good shepherd who leads. He is the good shepherd who guides. He is the good shepherd who protects. He is the Lamb of God who lays down His life for us. He is Jesus, the incarnate Son and Christ, the risen Lord. And He is the eternal, glorious, highly exalted King of heaven. That is who He is. That is who Jesus is. Psalms 8 verse 1 rightly acknowledges this. He says, Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Hallelujah. Fifth reason why I can hide in the name of the Lord. And the final reason is the name of the Lord can also be understood as his nature in representing itself. One aspect of that nature is a strong high tower offering a citadel of safety. Of holding of every hostile attack against his people. Family, God has the ability to protect you. God has the ability to save you. God has the ability to provide for you. God has the ability to be there for you. He can do that. In this tower, the righteous, those who are made right with God through Christ, can run in and hide, safely guarded above all the danger. For in the day of trouble, He will keep you, keep you safe in His dwelling. He will hide you in the shelter of His sacred tent and set you on high upon a rock. Psalms 27 verse 5. God has the ability to look after you. God has the ability to be with you, to walk with you. All we have to do is trust in Him. When you are anxious about something, right now at this point in time, go and hide in this tower. 
and you will see the deliverance and salvation of the Lord. I can vouch for that. Don't leave this tower until you have peace. Because the Bible says that where the peace of God is, God, where God's presence is, there is the peace of God. Because everywhere we God, so if, if, if you don't have peace about a situation right now, that means God's presence isn't there. Go and hide in Him. Go and hide in the strong tower. Go and be with Him. So that He can give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. And the world would look at you thinking, but, but what's going on with this person? Look at how, how 10,000 is falling on his left and 12,000 is falling on his right, but he's got peace. And then you can point them to Jesus and says, I am hiding in the strong tower which the righteous has access to. And I am safe there. I want to conclude. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Because it is capable of safeguarding. It is capable. It can safeguard all who call upon that name. When the prophet Joel foresaw the Lord's return, he saw a terrifying day of judgment and terror. Yet he declared, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Joel chapter 2 verse 32. The same promise of salvation in the name of the Lord echoes in the New Testament in Romans 10, uh, 13 and Acts 2 verse 21. When we call upon the name of the Lord, we call upon God Himself. When we hide, when we run into the strong tower, which is the name of the Lord, we run into God Himself. The Lord's name signifies everything that God is in Himself. He's compassionate. He's loving. He's kind. He's merciful. He's gracious. He's powerful. He's, he's, he's the judge. He's holy. He's perfect. He is knowledgeable. And the list goes on and on. Everyone who knows and trusts in Him discovers that Jesus Christ is indeed a strong tower. Let me pray for you this morning. Lord, again, I, I bring, bring AFM Impact and all those watching before your throne this morning. Lord, people are going through things and experiencing things that's not of you. They've got fears. They've got things holding them back. If we look at the world, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would come and be that hiding place. While you already are, I pray for people to have the boldness. Go and hide in your tower, in your name, in your presence, in you. So that nothing in this world can touch us. Nothing that's not from you will be able to touch us. In Jesus' name we pray. Family, I'm going to give over to, after we've seen sing this song, I'm going to give over to Martin. He's going to lead us. So today is also called the National Day of Prayer. And I think... It would be good for AFM Impact and all of you who's watching, who's visiting us, to use this opportunity to go and hide. He's going to lead us in prayer, but to go and hide in God for our country, for our situation. We've been fasting and praying throughout this week, and we'll continue until the present speaks to us again. I think it's um, next week, Sunday. And we are trusting God. To not only keep our country safe, but that many people would turn to Christ during this time. So, we're going to sing the song. And then I'm going to give over to Martin to lead us in prayer. And then write your prayers out on the comment section of the page. Participate. Take part. We can't be together physically. But we are together in the spirit. 
And so write your prayers out when Martin starts to pray. Agree, say amen, but write it out in the comments. And let's, let's, let's shake this nation through prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You are my hiding place. You always feel my heart with song. Of deliverance Wherever I am afraid I will trust in you I will trust in you Let the weak sing Let us get in a time of prayer. <coughs> like Pastor has said. You know, prayer makes a difference. When the children of God gather in prayer, we shake the environment. We are able to shake the forces of evil and make things happen. The Bible says that the fervent, heartfelt prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It means it makes tremendous power available. And I want us to pray. I'm going to give us four prayer points that we're going to pray this morning. And if you are sitting and you are able to stand up, please do so, so that we can pray together. And we are praying that the situation in our country gets better. And I've got four prayer points. And the first one says, I want us to pray for the intervention of the Holy Spirit in abating the violence that is happening in South Africa. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for the intervention of the Spirit of God. That the Holy Ghost of God moves in South Africa. Moves and touches the hearts of your people. Every citizen in this country to be moved by the Holy Spirit. So that they can focus on things that build, not things that destroy this country. May there be a move of the Holy Ghost who is present in this world, who is present in the earth today to change the hearts of men. Move, Holy Spirit. 
we ask you to move. We ask you to touch in every, each, and every one, each and every citizen of this country. That they may focus on nation building. In the name of Jesus Christ, touch everyone, even those that are not born again, Father. May you touch their spirits that when they come into your kingdom, they may focus on things that build the kingdom of God. Things that don't destroy the country in which they live. May the fire of the Holy Ghost be present in South Africa. May He touch this country. May the Holy Spirit move in all the provinces, in Gauteng, in KwaZulu-Natal, in Eastern Cape, Western Cape, Limpopo, in the Northern Cape, in Mpumalanga. May all the provinces be touched by the Spirit of God. May the move of God be present in the name of Jesus. The power of the Holy Ghost. May the power of the Holy Ghost shine in this country. May He touch your people this morning. In the name of Jesus. May people wake up on Monday with a different attitude, with changed hearts towards their country. In the name of Jesus Christ. For your word tells us, Lord, that whatever you ask for in my name, I will do it. The Father will do it. And Father, we hold you to your word right now. In the name of Jesus. We are faithful to your word. And we are asking you for the move of your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. To touch your people. To change the hearts of your people. To transform this country. In the name of Jesus Christ. Turn the hearts of your people Lord. In Jesus name. Towards nation building. In the name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, the second prayer point that we have is that I want us to pray that God raises his children in churches across the country to pray and stand in the gap of South Africa. That the people who are called by his name stand up and pray for the nation. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for every born again Christian in this country to raise to rise up, to raise their standard in the name of Jesus, in prayer, in fasting, in Jesus' mighty name. May you raise their level of faith. May you raise men and women of God who can stand in the gap for this country. Those that are called by your name, Father, I decree and declare that they are rising in the name of Jesus to stand in the gap for this country. May you raise soldiers of the spirit, soldiers of faith that can pray and stand in the gap for this country, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, every born again child of God, may you put fire in their hearts, may you burn their hearts in the name of Jesus. Hearts that burn for you, hearts that love you, hearts that love progress, hearts that love their country, hearts that have nationalistic ideas in their minds to grow this country not to destroy this country to make this country what it should be to give it its potential in the name of Jesus Christ that spirit of destruction we rebuke it in the name of Jesus every dominant child of God Father I pray that your love I pray that your spirit I pray that your fire touch them and raise them from their slumber in the name of Jesus Christ. That they can pray more, fast more, be in love with the things of God because only then when the children of God, those that are called by His name, stand up and stand in the gap, only then can they be a difference. You put us into this world for a reason. You put us into this country for a reason that we can pray and fast and be stand in the gap for your children and stand in the gap for the country that we live in in the name of Jesus Christ. All the lukewarm Christians, Father, may they be woken up from their slumber in the name of Jesus by the fire.
fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let them rise up. Every Christian, let him rise up in Jesus' mighty name. The third prayer point, children of God, is that actually before I, I give you the third prayer point, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Jesus was talking and he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. And we want to decree and declare because we have the power that we have been given by our Lord Jesus Christ. The third prayer point says that we want to rebuke the devil behind all the spirit of violence and killings in our country. This cannot be an act of God. This is an act of the devil. When people die for such silly things as this, when violence is perpetrated by a small group of people, it can only be the devil. And at this point, I want all the children of God right now to rebuke the devil, to rebuke all principalities and powers in Jesus' mighty name. You have the power to make a difference. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you've given us power, power to tread over serpents. And I rebuke the devil right now as a child of God born of God, born of the Spirit of God, I rebuke the devil and all his demons that are behind this spirit of violence in this country. We rebuke you. Be removed from our country in the name of Jesus. May every spirit behind all this spirit of violence go back to where it came from in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no power over the children of God. You have no power over the children of South Africa. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every devilish power, every principality, every power in high places, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, be removed. In KwaZulu Natal, in Houten, be removed. You agents of the devil, we rebuke you right now. We rebuke you in the name that is above every other name. The name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We rebuke you, demon. We rebuke you, devil, from our country. We rebuke you in our cities, in our business places, in our churches. In the name of Jesus. We rebuke you right now. We rebuke you. We rebuke you. We rebuke you to the north. We rebuke you to the west, to the east, to the south. You have no power. Be therefore removed in Jesus' name. Be removed from our churches, from our businesses. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the last prayer point, children of God, I want us to decree and declare peace in South Africa. Peace in this country. Peace in this country. We decree and declare by the power that is given unto us by our Lord Jesus Christ. We declare peace in our country. Peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace of God to be present in this country in the name of Jesus. that you left us, Jesus, before you left from heaven. That peace, that kind of peace is the peace that we decree in this country. We declare peace and we rebuke violence. Peace. Peace. Peace in KwaZulu-Natal. Peace in Gauteng. Peace in South
South Africa. In the name of Jesus Christ. May there be peace everywhere. Peace everywhere. That people can be able to go about their day-to-day businesses. They can be able to worship freely. They can be able to conduct their businesses freely. In the name of Jesus Christ. Peace. The peace of God. The peace of God. The Bible says that if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. I thank you, Father. Because when we pray, we don't pray in vain. You hear every word that we speak because we were bought by the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We are righteous because Jesus gave us his righteousness. Thank you, Father, that we can stand in your presence with boldness, without fear. Thank you that you have answered our prayers. Thank you that South Africa is going to become a peaceful country. Thank you that the spirit of violence are ending in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you that there is peace all around us. That there is peace in South Africa in the name of Jesus Christ. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you that you hear us every time that we pray. Thank you that you hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord, that we can stand here and acknowledge your presence in our lives. Thank you that you have given us power to make a difference in our country. We glorify you, Lord. We give you praise and honor in the name of Jesus Christ. Worthy are you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We glorify you. We worship you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. What a time. A great time to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Martin, for praying for our land. With such passion and conviction from the Lord, amen. Let us just go and sing this last song together, family. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. On, lift your mind, say, You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give. Family, let's all sing for a moment. Say, You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha, Jesus. You are. Hey! 
Afraid, family, not afraid. He rain is falling down. He rain is falling down. Not afraid. Let's just declare one more time and say, Open the floodgates, Jesus. Open the floodgates of hell. Johannesburg and Durban, Lord, open the floodgates of heaven, Jesus. Oh, let it rain. Said the healing rain, said healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Family, if there's anyone who is not feeling well in their bodies, raise up your faith, raise up your hands right now. We want to pray with you in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to your body. Come on. The healing power of God 
May it touch you from the comfort of your home. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that big pain, that heart problem, that disease to leave your body in the name of Jesus. That troublesome head. That sickness in your blood. Healing. 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 Healing in the name of Jesus. Healing. Healing. Receive the healing from the Spirit of God. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. That pain, let it get out of your body in the name of Jesus. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. That infirmity in your body, release, loose, loose in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Brother Jamila, for such a wonderful time of worship. Thank you, Pastor, for such a beautiful word that you shared for us this morning. Yes, Lord. Before we close, please share this broadcast. Amen. If you haven't shared it, share it. Share it. Click that share button wherever you're watching from so that we can reach to the uttermost part of the world, as the scriptures say. Share it, please. Share it. Let us cl close this uh, service in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for such a wonderful time that we had in your presence. Thank you for the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you started with us and you finished with us. Thank you for the healing that you are bringing to our country, for the revival you are bringing to South Africa in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for such an amazing word that will change our lives. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his countenance to shine upon you this week. May you come back again next week with a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. And the church said, Amen.